it? Yes, sir. Are we on? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Welcome everybody to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee as of January 22nd, 2019. Um, my name is Kelly Robinson. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Transportation Committee. Uh, this is our first meeting of the new year. Uh, we're going to go as our custom is around the room. Um, I want to first acknowledge our new committee member, uh, Madam Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones. She's the vice chair, but of course everyone knows her as the chairman of the Board of Commissioners. Madam Chair, welcome to the committee. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure being here. Okay. To my right, I have Mark Teal, County Administrator. Across from him is Miguel Valentin, who is the Director of Transportation. And to him is the Director of Multimodal, Gary Watson. Anybody else? And Jessica? Yes. It's here as well, Secretary. Anybody on the other side of you, Jessica? No, yes, sir. All right. We're good. All right. We want to go ahead and get started. We, Miguel, we've got a pretty full agenda. Yes. We do have um, guests that will be arriving probably about 3.30. Um, the um, City of Douglasville Chairman of Transportation, um, uh, Dr. Deshaun Burdanley, is coming with a guest to sort of, tell, to sort of dovetail this at the end. So we're going to try to make um, time for her. If not, we'll roll over to my office and we'll keep it moving. Okay? Okay. Very All good. Right. Well, uh, the first item on the agenda this afternoon is an update on the third-party contract negotiations for our fixed route bus service. Okay, just one point, point where do we have any meeting minutes or anything that we need to adopt? Uh, uh, yes, sir, we do. All right. If everybody had a chance to take a look at these, and Madam Chair, have you had a chance to, as is our custom, you weren't at the last meeting, so you may not have read these per se, but... Um, is anybody want to? Everybody else is good? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve? Yes. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any noise? Motion carries. Yep, got it. Okay, Miguel, sorry about that. I had to. Right. Uh, first item on the agenda again uh, update on third party negotiations yes. uh, related to our fixed route bus service, and uh, Gary Watson is going to provide an update on that. Thank you. The recent focus on our negotiation has been on insurance. What is the third party provider going to insure and what is Douglas County going to insure? Okay. Miguel and I had a two hour meeting last week uh, with Justin Rising of Transitions, uh, Matt Laverne, our risk and safety director, and Michael <coughs> White of Travelers Insurance. Uh, we believe it was a very beneficial meeting. I think we got some things hammered out and, and got a better direction on, on some other matters. Uh, I had invited Matt Laverne here today to, to give us an update since he's our insurance uh, expert. Uh, unfortunately, he's been tied up with the fire over at the Oak Fleet building today and couldn't make it. But I do know that Matt worked uh, a considerable amount of time over the long weekend over the, the insurance issues in the contract. In fact, he told me this morning that he'd been able to uh, go from 53 pages in the contract down to 15. <coughs> so that's, that's good news. And where we are now is that he and I are going to get together over the next couple of days, uh, have the contract in the form that we can submit it to travelers. Hopefully we'll get their blessing on it and then we can submit it to our legal department. Uh, so, so having said all of that, once we get the insurance done, uh, we need to make uh, a final pass uh, at the budget with them. And hopefully we can have a, a contract to, to, to submit to the Board of Commissioners for their approval by their second meeting in February. Uh, that might be a little optimistic, but that's what we're shooting for. Second meeting in February. So these issues that we're working through, are they about a handful that are outstanding? Probably a little less than a handful right, right okay. now. All right, so we've got we, about we got it narrowed down pretty. Okay, so everything else is approved, which is down to these final and we just and I won't belabor this because again we'll allow Matt, I think, to get more detail. And I appreciate the update. So two or three left. Uh, are we trying to work through Who's liable for what in this instance? Like, I mean, is it something exceptional? Or is it just typically um, it's about money? Well, it's, 
it's, it's, a, it's about money and exposure, but we, I think we uh, got that uh, satisfied. Uh, basically, we're going to, to call the, the drivers who will be employees of uh, transitions, but we're going to call them agents or independent contractors for Douglas County. We'll send them through all of our driver training, if it's in driving and those things like that. Yeah. And, and according to Matt, Matt, that limits our exposure considerably. Hey, let me start to the call in the agents, but if they're part of a third party contract and they work with them, what am I missing? Because the employees are not directly dealing with us. Why are we doing it that way? Well, again, I'll have to defer to, right, fair enough. to Matt. No, you, 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 you did good, Gary. So, Duly noted, Madam Chair, uh, would you like to bring anything on this one? Because I think you know, Matt should be here, and I think this was just sort of a quick update, so mm -hmm. I won't belabor it. Mm -hmm. I have the same question you know, if they can work for this particular company, I'm sure. I'm sure. And when we have the details, we'll bring it back to the exactly. mm -hmm. sure. yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, Gary, yeah, we'll bring the final, we'll bring it back in here before we move forward with anything. So, yeah, and to that point, uh, Commissioner. Madam Chair, the issue, one of the sticking points is that we own the equipment, even though they're going to be operating it. And so it's an issue of what can they insure when they do not own the equipment, so we're having to work on that. Uh, yeah. uh, it's not that, now we're cooking. No, all right, all right, all right, all right. Good job. All right, so I won't belabor that. So real quickly on third-party operator, and we'll, let's give them down a pretty full list. Third-party operator, um, for the record, um, you and I had a conversation as far as timeline. I think we've had some targeted April 1st party line conversation when this is going to go live in the spring. Um, I've seen a lot of um, 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 announcements and press releases and video clips of Connect Douglas. Thank you. And, and thank um, Rick Martin, our director of communications, for getting that. I, I saw him on People to People. Yesterday on Sunday, and it was a very, very good look, a very good look on, on WSB. So we want to thank them as well for coming out. That was, that was a very good look. Uh, that being said, um, that we're on track. I, we've had a chance to meet our new um, transit coordinator. Is that what we call mm -hmm. him? Transit services coordinator. Transit services coordinator. And again, for the for record of the committee, his name is who? Jamal Shepard. Jamal Shepard um, is officially, he is officially on board already. Yes, sir. And he's working and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, just for the, for the committee. So um, right now, it's basically January 22nd. Um, we, we sort of had just, as if you wanted to have a date, sort of an April 1st, April 2nd type of date. Um, the, in the likelihood that we're uh, on track, independent of the federal government shutdown, how do we look? Independent of that. And then I'm going to come with a second part of the question. To uh, How are we doing? Honestly, at this point right now, I think May 1st is probably a more realistic date than April 1st. Mm -hmm. What did you, you say? I'm sorry. I think May 1st is a more realistic date than April 1st right now. And is, that, is, that a, is that more of a, I need to declare but, um, that it is May 1st, or we, is it just is it more contingent upon working through um, issues such as insurance, perhaps our uh, our, our partnership with, with Cobb, um, or uh, is it about the function of funding? Because which one is the critical path? What, well, what's going to drive this? It's, it's all of the above. Uh, we, we still got to, to complete the contract with the third party provider mm -hmm. and get it approved by the, uh, the board of commissioners. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're still waiting on word from uh, from our our dealership as to when our eight additional cutaways uh, will will be delivered. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the federal government shutdown is is a huge uh, part of that as well. Okay, so you got two MOUs, one with a third party operator. Uh, we believe in the context that we're going to work through the COM, which is a sub point because we want to reach the routes, right? And yes, with that. Yes, right. We, so we have a conference call with COM coming up on February the 25th. Okay. We try to move that forward. Okay. 
MOU equipment and and then government. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, I get the MOU equipment. Now that that's a new one. Uh, um, and again, I don't want to be um, refrain ordering it. Uh, if something happened in our order that were delayed, seeing that we the board commissions approved, you know. Purchasing what happened? No, we did. We did everything fine. The holdup appears to be with the manufacturer and uh, the bus center, the, the dealership that we ordered them through. Mm -hmm. uh, they're having trouble getting an answer from the manufacturer. So I'm I'm trying to stay on that on a daily basis, but I haven't had any success to this point getting an answer. Okay. Each one of them might receive those vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. But you're not an escalation point somewhere, Miguel? I mean, how do you, I mean, surely we got to be able to escalate and get, you know, we always talk about being accountable, but also others have, like, okay, where are we? Do we pay money for this? We put a down payment? We just order it? Is there any liability for if we order something? Y'all, I mean. We haven't, we haven't paid uh, on it yet. Uh, but yeah, there is a point at which we would escalate uh, the issue. And we're getting very close to that. Mm -hmm. So just for the record, it sounds like an MOU equipment and then obviously overall funding, which obviously mm -hmm. I think to that point, um, um, I think we have our local match. Um, please confirm for the record for the committee and for the film that um, did we complete the process, the application process that was part of the ARC, uh, the FTA, did the money flex, get, get, just for the record. Where does that stand? Walk the, us the application was submitted to the Federal Transit Administration about 10 days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And of course, shortly after that, the federal government shut down. But they they have everything from us that they need to begin the review of our application. They just won't be able to start that until they get back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when they get back, even if it's tomorrow or two months from now, is there an assumption on my part that there are people already in queue that they won't just immediately pay for a whole bunch of overtime and catch back up and keep us on schedule, right? So it's going to slide based on correct. The the, the uh, review period for them right. hasn't started. They would have started back in December. Mm -hmm. Had they been up and went down, uh, Presumably, our application was one of the earlier ones that yep. went in because we went in very early in the, in the opening period. Yes. But um, anybody that made an application prior to us presumably is in the queue to review, and their review time hasn't started. The clock hasn't started. Well, how long is the review time, please? To typically, traditionally, average? 30 to 60 days. Right, so 30 to 60 part, days. Part of the the time on, on that is uh, any application dealing with, with transit has to be submitted to the United States Department of Labor for union certifications and that type of thing. And that's typically a two to three week process. So that two to three week process is inside the 36 days? Mm -hmm. That's fine. All right, so to that point, Madam Chair, and to the whole committee, it's 30, 36 days for whenever they get back. There's no way around. That's, that's just the truth of it. But to, but to Miguel's point and Mark's point, uh, the Federal Transit Administration Region 4 office in Atlanta has 268 grantees. Right. And we're not the only one who submitted an I application. Should. So at a minimum, if they went fast, but then, okay, so. <laughs> but at least they had it. They had it. Yeah. We're not waiting good. to submit it. Exactly. It's always. It's, yeah. mm -hmm. I, no need to belabor it. I mean, it is what. So, Regardless of when they come back, that, that gives you time to finalize the MOU uh, with their party operator, work through your insurance, work through your equipment, and work through COP. Yes, sir. While, while we're waiting on the federal government, we are diligently working on those other items. So, okay. Play on. I think that's all we can do. Thank you. I have one comment. Yeah. I made, uh, Chairman, uh, those buses have I mean, those cutaways have to be wrapped by government. Right? So how long does that process wrap? We can get that done in a week to ten days. Okay. You know, because we're we'll we'll have that order placed and everything ready to go the minute we get the video. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? All right. 
Miguel, keep us moving. Okay, second item on the agenda that relates to the transportation, transportation center addition. Uh, we have discussion about that probably the last couple of meetings. Uh, and uh, Gary's going to give us an update on where we are relative to the value engineering. As you know, the bids came back in and they were higher than uh, the funding that was available. So we come back to them to try and get the design aligned with the funding. That's okay. The we had five bids submitted. Um, they were all significantly over budget. The the contractor that we chose to negotiate with, their bid was $1,695,500 uh, for this particular project. We have $1,482,751 available. So we got with the, uh, our contractor, asked them to do some value engineering on the project, and they were able to uh, reduced their, their bid about $250,000, which brought us under budget. So we now have the money available to, to build the addition. <clears throat> However, uh, those value engineering items are requiring our architect to redraw some of the construction documents. So and what that we that. are asking for uh, is eleven thousand two hundred forty dollars uh, for the architect to do this this work now up to tonight's agenda yes sir and this eleven thousand two hundred forty dollars uh, that is grant money eighty percent of that will be paid by one of our FTA grants and this in the budget we don't it won't require a budget amendment or anything okay. so I get it so we save money but then we had to add money back to it to make it all work I, I get a net difference you know, for $11,000. Um, and this is part of the, uh, I think, our procurement process because, okay, so why do we have $11,000 on the agenda today with the Board of Commissioners when you guys have more than enough authority to be able to do that? Is this sort of like that administrative concurrence? I mean, I don't see. Well, let's, I, I can what, address that to some, to some degree. We, okay. we submitted this to, to purchasing uh, to try to get a requisition for it yeah. and, and they sent it back to us and said it needed board approval. The reason it needs board approval is because it's a changeover to an existing contract. It's an existing contract and you have the money. Again, it's something to talk about, but I, I just think that, but that thing, what drives, again, go back to our purchasing protocol, it's about dollars. Nowhere in that policy does it speak to it it has um, a contract. It's a dollar threshold. So I'm thinking, well, y'all were, are we approving? I mean, what are we really saying? You have the authority to sign off on $11,000, right? You have the budget. I understand that we had to create the budget, but I'm sure you had to go into contingency or something, but you guys have the power within the administration. Why would you? It's okay. Yeah, and we're Bring working. Point. It's just on the point. We're working through that. Yeah. We're coming up with some ideas in the Purchase and Oversight Committee to, to speed up some of these things. So we can I'm more for that. that. I think that would be great. <laughs> then, Sherry, you see Absolutely. We're pushing it. Okay. So no criticism, no nothing. It was just for a broader record. Sounds good. All right. So do we, we, it's already on the agenda, so there's no recommendation needs to come forth. I would have said, you know, Mr. Kerkers, keep moving and take it to the full board. So I, anything else you need on that? No, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Keep Thank going. You. All right. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, an update on the work scope with the collaborative firm yep. uh, for the uh, 2019 scope of service. Yes. Yeah. And Danielle Crow from the collaborative firm is, is here to do the set up today. Danielle, welcome. Please join us. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I've been asked to be very brief, so I will be. Um, just to let you know some of the um, efforts that are currently underway, as Commissioner Robinson shared earlier, um, Connect Douglas has enjoyed um, a great deal of visibility at the beginning of the year, and that continues on. Um, there are several things that are in the works. We recently did some interview preparation with um, our mobility manager, uh, LaWanda Jones, for a story that appeared in the Sentinel today. Um, as a matter of fact, I spoke with Crystal before I left out, uh, the reporter before I left out for the uh, route, so she was dropping off some copies. 
um, that's also available digitally. And uh, speaking of which, the story, the 30-second spin that aired on WSB was also shared 17 times from their site. So we're looking at not only once something airs one time, but what type of engagement do we have thereafter. Mm -hmm. um, our social media uh, following continues to grow. And as I shared with Gary today, uh, one of our posts today, now the, the, the engagement is not so much we don't want something, but why aren't you in this area? So that was the feedback today. Why aren't you um, 20 on Fairburn Road south of 20? Uh, and so our response is always thanking people for their input, irrespective of what it is, that's our policy, um, but letting them know that this is the beginning, this is the initial rollout. Um, other things that are going on at this time is that we're currently in the process of developing um, the new maps for the routes, uh, some that are, are more visually appealing that we can share digitally and use at different presentations. Um, We've also gotten clearance from the communications department to um, get some support with uh, some footage recommendations that we had. So those were things that we discussed on last year, but uh, in terms of timing, um, that's where we're moving forward with right now. And so that's a bulk of what I have to share for today. One, one thing to add to uh, what Danielle said, that uh, the city of Douglasville has asked us to make a presentation during their retreat on February the 8th. And so the collaborative firm will be working with me to help uh, make that presentation. And I'm, I'm also inviting uh, uh, Justin Rising from a third party operator standpoint to be with us at that presentation. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Good collaboration. Uh, before you move off, two things. Um, Madam Chair, I don't know if you have the um, Madam Chair, now a new member, you might have heard. Um, to speak. Do you have, um, have you made any changes to the, um, the marketing, the marketing plan you guys presented in our very last meeting that we approved? Let's make sure she gets a copy. Y'all gave me a hard copy. Jessica has all the information electronically, and I, I presume that it was distributed. But if I need to resend that, I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 we intend to give it to our, our new committee members first day. Then. All right. So, um, second thing is, um, what have we? Um, two things, um, marketing-wise, as we move forward in light of the. Federal government. Um, what, what is the committee? This is more of a, what's the talking point? Um, I, I, I prefer it's, it's not a politicized answer um, regarding the federal government and um, specifically what we're doing, but we do want it to be fact and truth based. Right? Uh, that there's a very material because right now we're out there. Um, sometimes the average citizen just doesn't put it all together. I've had conversations and they've been meeting. People like, you know, the federal government and that, and that was funding. And they're like, oh yeah, not recognizing the impact on the buses. So I guess I'm looking to our advisors to making sure we begin at least a frame, a party line on how we say this, to make sure that we're respecting that we're, we're not. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's going to be some unintended consequences. Um, associated if, if the narrative shifts into just being about the federal government as opposed to, hey, it's just a delay, it's a circumstance of funding, but staying on task, staying on task, like I want to be careful when people go out here and say a date, whether it's May, whether it's like, well, right now we said April, and we're all relatively spring, but I'm, I'm real careful when we begin to declare dates on something we can't control, but yet how do we message properly to the public, which is like, stay tuned, do we just keep giving them updates and letting them know our progress? And it's just, I mean, I'm, I'm very serious about this, mm -hmm. uh, that we don't walk into something, that we don't play. Because again, we've got a very healthy moment right now, some positive things, um, but at the same point, um, you know, it can be easy to just pop back off because being tied to the rock picture. So I'm open to thoughts on this. We don't have to be long on it, but I wanna. Well, basically, what, what we've done recently is 
instead of using that April 1st date that we had used for a long time, we started saying in spring, which gives us a much broader window. So what is spring? Is April, June? May, June? Well, that, it's a very broad term, and I mean, the official date of spring is actually in March, but no one really knows that unless they're studying it. Um, it it's just a broad season. We're saying in the season of the spring. Uh, so even the posting today says beginning in the spring, uh, and it just refers to shopping. Uh, what we've also done in terms of our efforts is to not only focus on the fixed bus service, but to continue to promote all of the services uh, within Connect Up. So the, the story today was about the transportation providers that are needed for the expansion of the uh, transportation voucher program. Um, and there are other efforts that are going to be focused on now with the van pools, um, in part for people who are uh, employees who still need that assistance to get to work. So. Um, there are just different areas where we're focusing. And we, Rick Barton told me earlier today that, that WSBTV is wanting to do a, a board this afternoon on the voucher program, too. So they're giving us some really good uh, exposure. Yeah. Nice. So, so I, and two, two is not either or, I think it's both that I appreciate the message of, of the fullness, the full suite of services of Connect Douglas. I, I think that's appropriate to continue to communicate that and just, okay, well, there's other things we can talk about. But then running in parallel to that, there's still a, a timeline, right? There's still, um, from us as elected, you have to set the community's expectation, right? It's like, okay, well, and I think the, the spring is it's safe right now, but people get, you know, what are y'all really doing? And I think that's what we have to, while we're marketing and talking about, hey, look all the great things that it offers, we have to tell them specifically where we are as well on the buses because it's not either or it's both. So, Madam Chair, this is just us talking for the record. Um, um, any thoughts on that before we shift? I and mean, just to put it out there that we have to be very careful in how we, we message now uh, and, and just be thoughtful not to add too much to, uh, but yet just don't leave it there. Um, again, just talk about other things because we only talk about other things and don't talk about buses. Like, okay, so now you. You're hiding from it, right? So you, you got to have a dual message. So it's just something for us to be thinking about and recognize as we're in that time period. And we talked, Danielle and I talked about that various things earlier this morning. Yeah. We're going mm -hmm. to address that. Right. And uh, I'm, uh, you know, some things have shifted beyond our control, particularly with the shutdown with the federal government. So that's, I, I believe spring is soft and mm -hmm. it, it, it allows us to have some autonomy and it's very fluid all the way up to June 22nd is when summer began. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to wiggle because we, we, we have some things that just occurred that and I know the citizens know as well as we are. And uh, this uh believe it or not the macro this uh shutdown is having a macro effect. So it's just we we all at a standstill. So I think we will be able to understand that if we message it in the correct way. Mm -hmm firm and be consistent. And again, mm -hmm. people are going to come back to this committee and those who are agents of it, and we just want to make sure we're on the same page. That's mm -hmm. all I ask. Everybody else is no they're at their own. Okay, and I think as, as you message, uh, then you know, collective firm, as you message, if we could just continue to, I guess at this point, we need to still leave at the forefront of now and just kind of hands a little tired with the shutdown. And I know the citizens realize that the shutdown is occurring and it's not the need to any of us. Yes, and, and I guess perhaps Gary and I can have a, 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 a continued discussion uh, thereafter to see how much we feel that it's shifted at this time. Um, I think the questions at this point are, are very positive because it's when is it going to start because I want to use it. It's not when is it going to start because I think it's delayed. Right. Um, but thereafter, after we develop those key messages, once we know how much we think that it has been some offset, then we can distribute that also through the Transportation Committee and mm -hmm. to the Board of Commissioners so that everyone can be on the same page. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I agree with the term key messages, uh, but there's a reality here. It's like, okay, this thing will be all right. Mm -hmm. right. And, I hope. And, and to the point. I've got citizens, you've got people who are seniors who may not, but again, if, we, if you got 15,000 people on Rick Martin's communication, right, that's less than 10% of 150,000 people, right, you, that may get what's happening, right, plus any of us that have our own, like, it's a very small sample. The public does not follow us like they think. 
they will pop up every now and then, but typically the citizens are in their own world, their own issues, they're just not, they, they, they don't have to carry it that way. There's no less of a citizen, they're no more committed, they're no more um, loyal. Um, as Americans, it's just they got their own life. And so that's why I, I've done this long enough, you know, like, no, oh, citizens, I mean, I could just be talking to them, and they, they're not putting it together, we're making assumptions that they should know, and that all they know is that they know the bus is supposed to be coming. And not, they, they, it is not their job to have you. That's what we're here for to help. Like, okay, let me bridge this gap for you because I, you know, I, I already know that you don't see the, the connection between the two. Because there are certain services that are still going. There are certain, like Marta is going. Certain things, they ain't trying to be as smart as we are and trying to figure out like, okay, well, oh, that's funding. I thought y'all had the money. Well, they ain't like that. They don't have to carry that. So that's what I'm saying. Let's be sensitive and not over simplified like the message to them let's 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 be sensitive to the fact that they may not know and just not just give them uh, okay here you should know this it, it doesn't need to be marginalizing it doesn't need to be like you should know this you, you really that's what i'm saying we need to be careful with this not not to lose the the positives that we have uh because it can be easily tied to them so i, I just you guys will work out the key messages but let's just be careful about what we what about the citizens those who because they are looking for it, they're waiting for it, and they're not, they ain't looking at how we put capital stack together, capital transportation fund, how much is coming from the federal government, how much is coming from, they don't, they, that's what they hired us for. That's my point. So they're thinking, well, why isn't the buses? Y'all talking about y'all charging fares? They're talking about, okay, I only got to pay a dollar. Y'all said y'all ordered the buses. Well, you told us that it was April 1st. It's not been like it's just a point, Madam Chair. It's just, it, it, and again, I look forward to those key messages to help, um, you know, Madam Chair and her executive office, um, Rick Martin, um, as he communicates outwardly, and of course the dish commissioners as we talk to our respective uh, offices, how we can, how we as the elected carry that message. But you guys are on point to stay on task, keep doing what you're doing. We're fine, but Madam Chair, we just, we just gotta be sensitive on this one. This is an important one. Anything else, guys? No, sir. Okay. Daniel, are you okay? I'm great, and I'll be sure to reach out with Rick because I know that we've never formally com uh, communicated April 1st, so I'll be sure to work with him and, and um, make sure that we're communicating the same thing. This spring. This spring. Yeah, this spring. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. You know, the April 1st is out there. There's a date because yeah. um, the public, when are you going to turn on? When is the light? When I get my, mm -hmm. when I have to turn in? We're good. Anything else? Mark, you okay? Because I'm on shift. Mm -hmm. All right, so Miguel, thank you, Daniel. Yes, sir. All right, let's keep moving. Next item on the agenda is a discussion about the SWAS transportation project list. Yes. Um, we uh, have had discussion at the prior meeting about uh, reprioritizing some of the uh, projects. And um, I have a, you have a list. A list, uh, and this is really a, a copy of the handout or one of the slides that was provided at the uh, last SQUAS update. Yeah. Provided by uh, by Moreland Altabelli, but it, it serves as a pretty handy list to be able to have a discussion from. Uh, and this this list is. Uh, Again, strictly transportation projects, yep. but uh, but it does put into context those projects that we have uh, allocated funding for, some of which have been completed, and those that remain. And the fact that if we uh, if we uh, do not uh, do certain projects, uh, and we get 92, for example, uh, then uh, there are other projects that would be potentially reprioritize, and there's been discussion uh, about some of the sidewalk projects. Uh, in fact, uh, there specifically there's been a request for a sidewalk addition, which is uh, at the Lithia Springs High School. Uh, there is the remainder, not the remainder, but there is a, a project uh, on Maxim Road as well, where uh, there is a GDOT project that is going to provide sidewalks and other improvements up to a certain point along Maxim from Thornton Road, but it does not connect all the way to the existing sidewalk uh, uh, in Cobb County. And so 
that is uh, potentially another project that could be uh, revisited uh, and expedited or reprioritized. Uh, is it rights of what they call safe passages for children? Um, so, um, obviously, um, high density areas in which citizens are exposed to high traffic uh, is important, which is the maximum world one. Um, you know, we've had enough. we don't have to rehash the, the, the public exposure there. Um, um, so that being said, I, I'll do this by memory since I don't have a political list to come back for me. Um, so that being said, how much is, um, in looking at Anna Wake, um, in 92, how much is that project specific? Well, we had uh, estimated, again, it was a I rough see. estimate, about $6 million would have been the cost of that project. $6 million even, or was it? It was, it it was, was even, but even. it was estimated. It was uh, a rough But we had $6 million on the sheet. On the sheet, yeah. Right. So yeah, $6 million on the sheet. All right, so it was on the list, and we talked about it. Uh, we've identified, and, and this is what's important, now we're two years in, and I'm sure, again, welcome to the committee, because this is something that your, your input is, is important to be um, as valued. Um, so we've got um, six million in. Um, um, have we taken any money out of this at all yet? Specifically, how do we pay for the culvert? Um, culvert? Yes. Yes. There, uh, Whitestone Culvert, there's a $800,000 allocation and it's listed on the on the sheet here and, and that was from the reallocation of funds related to the post road bridge. Right. I see no direct impact on this one. Correct. Correct. Right. right. So Wystone and Post Road, same district, reallocation, right? Mm -hmm. Present. Thank you. Okay. So here we are now with the six million. Um, 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 I've heard everything from, since that project is not going to be done, yes, oh, thank you, sure, awesome, awesome. Since that's not going to be done, then, okay, good. And since that's not going to be done, uh, I've heard perhaps, if not that intersection, maybe another intersection, I've heard perhaps if you don't use all of that, then perhaps you have sidewalks, and I've also heard street lights. That's pro probably like quick, safety-oriented um, um, pa passages of safety type of, of um, need. Anything else that you've heard? Uh, I have not. Um, uh, no, essentially, uh, we, as we allocated funding out of the savings from the bridge, um, they went to a variety of different things, one of them being equipment that's been purchased, uh, right-of-way acquisition. So um, there's been, again, a variety of things that the funding has been allocated for. Mm -hmm. Initially, there was funding set aside strictly for sidewalks, and there, were, there was a priority on that, um, some of which is under design, as you know. Three different projects uh, that are currently under design. And um, the program that you referred to, uh, the, uh, I believe it used to be called the Safe Routes to School program. Uh, that was, unfortunately, the funding for that was, uh, went away uh, at, the, at the DOT for a while. Uh, how much they're going to resurrect that, I, I don't know, but uh, there hasn't been a lot of funding for that at the state level uh, in, in past years. Okay. So uh, there, the, the allocation of the funding could be for whatever worthwhile purpose the, the board. Uh, uh, discretion. Uh, your discretion. No discretion. Okay. All right. So if I had to frame a reallocation, and this is where I'm at right now in the sense of time, we don't have to decide per se. But all right. So if it was for SR92 and waking reconstruction, we thought that, yes, while it was willing to be considered, as we would say, um, going into um, securing our spots funding, bond funding, uh, we realized now two years later, mm, may not get us the most big bang problem. But is there another intersection as a, a, a straight switch that it could be used for another area that's related? Um, the Lee Road um, obviously is something that we thought was should have been further along. 
um, we recognize that at least in what I've heard you guys report is that that project um, that well, while once may have cost us 12 million total all in is now upwards 21, 21. Uh, 18 mm -hmm. plus another 3 million for his plated costs etc. Mm -hmm. over there. Um, in, in, in order to get to a 21 million dollar vote, we need to keep the road going, which obviously is going to extend through District 1, 2, 3, and all 2 and 4, but right now in this immediate phase, 2 and 3, um, and back to 1 eventually in the next phase, um, that's what, 30%, 40% puts it what, around 10 million, 11 million? It, it, is yeah, like the 11 million is the local exposure. Right now. 11 million is local so, exposure. So it's a little over 50%. Yeah. Why would these fifty percent want something like this versus typical forty or thirty or? Why? Well, because because uh, the amount allocated that uh, initially this was a grant project and the amount allocated has been some of it expended uh, for right of way acquisition. Yes. And so the remainder, if if we're able to get all of what was originally allocated, is around ten million. So the, the difference between the total cost of 21 and what may hopefully is available, uh, 10 leaves us with an exposure of 11. Now that is more than the typical granted, yeah. but until or if there is additional allocation from the federal government, then uh, that is where we're at. There's potentially 10 federal and state and 11 that we have to come from. I see. You got a, a pen or a note that we're going to go and revisit that one day, right? Yes. No, 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 we're not. So, all right, so you said 11, right? Correct. All right. So, we, we, to even fulfill um, the legal, which is a priority that's been there um, for quite some time, even before um, uh, what I want to call um, legal, the Thornton Road, per se, um, we know that if I was going to make up that difference and say, okay, if I took five million out of six million, uh, let's say I got a million dollars left over for something else, and I've got five million dollars for um, against that eleven, I need six more. Uh, the only pocket of money that I know that we are aware of that could be used is perhaps the economic development component of the SWAST, which falls under transportation. Is that an accurate number? Is, still, is it still there, Mark? Yes, sir. It's still there. It's still there. And then also, technically, according to the way we set up the splice to begin with and the way it was put on the ballot, you could take it from any section you wanted to. Right. If that, if you, if you wanted to. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you want to. But, but that being said, it, it, it's acknowledged that there was no, and I, I know we, we got um, comments that we allocated $10 million that didn't have any project tied to it. Unlike the, the list that you created to go there, everything else would have sort of a, an appointed project list. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. So that being said, um, if I, so how much money is in the SPLOS economic development? I know we've done some studies. I know Chris Humphrey has come over here and talked to us a couple of times. And we There's a balance of about approximately 8.2 million. So we spent a million eight? Really? Yes, sir. Was it on the street uh, Riverside Street, Parkway Street Lights, Lee Road Extension Study, um, Riverside Rock House Traffic Signal. Um, what's proposed in here is the Maxim Roads and State Route about five G dot match. Those are down the road, man. We're not ready for those yet, right? But well, we, we went in and put the numbers. We'll in. need to be ready in, in 2019. So that yes. this is an M. Yeah, I mean, it's coming. 750,000. Uh, and then the construction engineer, we had to put that somewhere, we, and we can move it. We put it in, uh, that's six years worth, that's $500,000. Yeah. It's 1.799. Yeah. That, that, well, that total is. Mm -hmm. So that 1.799. Sixty-five plus seventeen it gives me eighty-two. Did I do that right? Sixty-five seventeen gives me eighty-two. Eighty-two. Did I do that? Yeah. All right. So that means I got about half million dollars left over. Uh, 
if I took six million dollars out. So you have two point two million. We had ten to start with. Mm -hmm. I thought you said we burned down. We only had eight. We had eight point two. Eight. We're down to eight point two. So if you take six, it leaves you two point two. Yes. That's what we took those other ones out. We already took those other ones out. Okay. So I was asking. All right. So, okay. So, Madam Chair, all right. So I think I'm safe then by saying that we were able to reallocate $6 million from the SPLOS economic development component, add that to the $5 million associated with this um, transportation, um, um, what do we call it? What do we call these things? Area. Yeah. Um, well, that was under the category of intersection and operational improvements. So, five to six gets me to 11. That means I think that leaves me 1 million in the operational intersection improvement. Mm -hmm. It leaves me 2 million in the economic development pure. Correct. Right. Um, the economic development pure, we still have some board road master plan commitments that we need to finalize, roundabouts, uh, things associated with that master plan, mm -hmm. uh, making our commitment to um, uh, or our contribution to road improvements um, um, in that Thornton Road Master Plan. Recognizing that Thornton Road Master Plan was what, two options, 21 million and 45 million? Do you guys remember what the Master Plan, I, I think those numbers were like? I, I, it was before my time, so I don't know about the initial uh, yeah. cost estimates, but, but there were two different options. Right. I think they were like And I think we, uh, the one that was selected was the one that was uh, least I almost want to be. Mark, we just confirm what those numbers were in the master plan. 21 million and 40. It's in the South Street Water. South Street Water Master Plan. There was two options we went with. And the side access road was down. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, don't you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Pretty pumpkin or something. All right. So, all right, let, me, let me stay on point. So, that 2 million still needs to be somewhat preserved for that. Uh, and our, um, not a pure press on developers alone, but we also agreed to put money into that to make improvements alongside of it. Um, um, uh, um, so that's that one. Back to, to this million dollar excess, Madam Chair, and I'm open to you guys suggesting something. Uh, we've got a million dollars left over from the transportation, uh, intersection and operational improvements. So is this something that we can do lights um, that may be more Lights and sidewalks, but specifically to stay on lights for a second, um, dealing with um, um, bridges, bad dark corners, um, um, roundabout areas. I mean, anything that could be significant. I mean, and all of this is about safety right now. So the, the acceleration of it, the expedition of it, um, is, is about lights and sidewalks dealing with some safety. Um, and so that's why we're so putting emphasis on that. And, what would a million dollars could I allocate maybe half and half to be adequate, maybe half into lights and half into sidewalks, or is it more 70-30 uh, lights and sidewalks? It depends on, on the location, because we've talked to, and, and in fact there's an item on the agenda about the need for improvements in other court, mm -hmm. um, some state routes, uh, some, some of the okay. state locations, but those are bigger ticket items. So if you were considering lighting for an interchange, you're, you're talking about several, you know, at least a couple of million per interchange. Uh, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't work for that. But if you were considering lighting a typical intersection, uh, a roundabout, for example, that is more doable. Perhaps you could split that into like a couple of different projects. All right, so I won't leave that. I want to come back, you're right, it's on the agenda. We'll come back to that to later. So let, let's do, in other words, we can come up with options. I think this agenda item was for us to agree uh, or come to some type of conclusion as a committee to restructure, to make a recommendation to establish that we are um, recommending a reshuffle uh, of the $5 million from the operational improvement section of the, uh, of the SPLOS from SR92 and OAP to leave over five million. That's the first part. The second part is to use the remaining one million dollars at the discretion of the committee or the full board on where to put that. 
to each other. Right? Um, and so that's the reshuffling of our list at this moment. And that $1 million dollar reshuffle, whether it's a small sidewalk project uh, or some type of lighting initiative, uh, will be finalized. All right, you got that? Just that was that was that was the only one. That's what that's about. Now, what we're also saying, and I want to make sure there's a double part, is that that five million dollars that we're moving from Man Wakey over to Lee Road, that we're going to commit to making a recommendation to use six million dollars out of economic development over there to finish Lee Road. And I'm open to because we, if we, if, if so, this is a very defining moment in the sense that, okay, if we do this, this got to go. It, it can't be what well, we're still working it out because it's like, okay, this is like, okay, you got a shot right here where there's perhaps a willingness to move this. But we don't need, to, we have to be real careful we don't re-experience 13. And, and so it's like, okay, it's a commitment. One more time. We're committed to this. We know this is a major priority. We know this is an economic development priority. We know that the public has been involved in this. We've done two studies here. We've done the road. We've done the expanded road. All this and so, and the public is waiting. Um, and, and not to mention the half million dollars we're about to put on Lee Road anyway um, for resurfacing that the edge is going to get broken up. But it's like, okay, we're about to put six and a half million dollars in it. Correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. Out of that one, another five million dollars puts me a total of eleven and a half million dollars. Okay. This year, are we going? Okay. But, but let me tell you what the process would be moving forward if this allocation or reallocation is, is made. The project was ready to go to construction and it was, and that was in 2018. Due to funding, it could not move. It was pushed out by uh, the Georgia DOT to 2023. And in fact, they've been looking recently about, well, when is this going to happen? So they, they push it out, anticipating that they will at some point hear from us and say, okay, we're ready to go on this particular budget year, their budget year. And so we would, um, we would have to go to them with this proposition that essentially we are committed to funding our portion, uh, our exposure of the total 21 million if they can confirm to us two things. One, that the original grant of funding will be honored. And two, that instead of 2023 where they parked the project, they will move it forward to 2019, or something 2019. Or 2020 because their fiscal year begins, or federal fiscal year, fiscal year um, is in October, but their fiscal year begins July 1st. So by the time we work through this, we're talking about the 2020 fiscal year for for this. Part of that's in 19. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Right. So, mm -hmm. so those two components, those two major things would have to be uh, would have to line up for us to be able to move uh, from this budget allocation to getting everything lined up to be able to advertise the program. All right, so um, that sounds like we're ready. I think there's a I think that there's a pause in me based on what you're hearing. Cause the first time I heard 2023. And now we got to bring them back. I know that there was some, there was a, an offer by um, uh, General Sydney local delegation to aid us. I know I read an email communication mm -hmm. suggesting that we're looking for some assistance. But this is this is the type of moving. I, uh, can move like this. Uh, let, let me let me offer something there, Commissioner. The uh, moving a project to a far off year is not uncommon. Essentially, when they don't know when the local government is going to be ready, uh, they move it to the end of the uh, tip. I understand. 
transportation can take uh, They uh, did that same thing with the Bill Rica bypass. Uh, I'm, I'm, you, gentlemen, trust me, I'm, I'm good. But they are often very willing to, if everything lines up, to move it, bring it forward again. That's all I'm, I'm saying, that, mm -hmm. but um, we have to have the serious conversation and show basically what I call proof of funds. Look, we got this and we need a decision. But we can't be held as hostage to the fact, like, okay, we got authorities. Just like this SR-92, we keep moving. And so I, I and while I think there's an acknowledgement, it's like, okay, guys, um, where are they? Um, if I've got developers that are putting money in on Thornton Road, uh, we have a, we have an, there's an implied expectation that we'll help with road improvements up there. Well, do I need to stay the course up there? That's 21 million, right? That's economic development. That's active people put money in. Or if I'm looking at Lee Road, which has been delayed, and again, I, I, it's either way, but it, at some point you've got to make a hard decision. And I, I, I think what we're saying is that, in, in Madam Chair, to the full committee, we have the funding. We can stack this capital just right, but I, I like, and, and Mark, I need you to um, perhaps, you know, have we heard anything back, or how do we now go, maybe this is the conversation where we craft a letter with the, a recommendation from the um, committee and the board saying that we are committed, we have a hard 11 million. And we need to know this year, so you send it up to the delegation, you send it up to um, whoever's going to be the new head of whoever, whatever, McMurray. And we need to have this very, very real conversation. You know, you and you've been up there. You, you do. I, I have, and, and in fact, I've had a, a, a discussion with uh, with Commissioner McMurray about this uh, situation. Right. And what essentially what he is waiting for okay. is for me to come in with, we're ready. We found the money. Now we need you to live up to your right. And we can find, we can get an answer. A hypothetical answer, look, we got the money. Can you promise us that these things are going then we can bring it back to the committee and exactly. go moving exactly. forward with our full recommendation? I, I think I think we would be in a much stronger negotiating position if we say we have uh, allocated the funding or earmarked the funding for this project if you can live up to your commitment and move the project yeah. we can do it either to construction. Right. So is it better that you guys send it off your between you two's letterhead saying that you have support um, and a recommendation from our local transportation committee to allocate this funds and once your ultimate approval is there, then it comes back to our full board of commissioners. I mean, it, it, just because right now it's just it's conversation. Uh, understood. Like, uh, and, but he, uh, the way we left it was that when when we were ready. I would go pay him a visit and have the discussion and work out through the details. Do you so we need a recommendation. You need a recommendation, which is back where I'm at. So that's what I'm saying. If we sit here in this committee and sit here and you know, say we're going to do 11 million, six and five, and you go have your conversation, if there's an implied, I told us y'all were ready. Yeah, so we need board approval too. Well, I just, we want to know will, will that work? In, we can tell them this is where we're going, but they tell us no, and they tell us no. Yeah. Right. I mean, I just want to say, do we have the money? The answer is we have the money. Okay. Right. That, that's what, so we're confirming there is proof of funds, but you still have to go through authorization and closing, right? right. So I think we, we just want to, you can, you can take to him that, yes, we have um, the funds. And so now what? And so, um, I mean, that's all we can do. So we need a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Then get the board to approve it, then go talk to GDOT and say, look, we have appropriated the funds. If they say no, then we reappropriate we we re it. We reallocate it somewhere else. So I guess I'm, I was looking more for the administration to talk to the administration and say, you know, bring to the board of commissioners when y'all are ready for us to sign off on something versus you know, Will he agree that yes, we, would you confirm with him that yes, do y'all have the local pass? And the answer is yes. And I think that confirmation will need to come in the form of a resolution allocating the funding. I think before they actually go through the iteration of lining everything up, they're going to want something yeah. from us. Okay, so tell the formal. This is where I was taking this whole thing. 
Because again, without her earlier, we were just going to have a conversation. I can call them and call them. And I was waiting for the formal. Like, okay, now my point. If we commit to this, there's no backing off. I know I've had these conversations before. It's like, okay, now. All right, so one more time. We're going to do five and six. That's going to be part of the recommendation out of this action item um, on the agenda. That we are, this, this transportation committee is making a recommendation to reallocate according to what we already stated. You know, that take that $6 million, $5 million goes to the road, $1 million is discretionary based on whatever the current needs are, mm -hmm. and taking $6 million out of the $8.2 million over the economic development and, and giving that to the Board of Commissioners as a recommendation to be used for the road, specifically the widening and the expansion. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 I have one question, yep. Commissioner. You said that one meeting would be used discretionary. Can we be specific about that, which would be lights and sidewalks? So make that in writing as well. Because we don't want that to just, you know, that one meeting means that we do whatever. I want it to be specific. Lights. All right, I'd like to make amend my comment to take that one million dollars and add sidewalks and lights as being the perfect the use of those lights. All right, I, I re -amend, I've amended the motion, so can I get a... I amend my motion, okay. heard the discussion, okay. and you can second. You second his second. Then can we have discussion? Yes, I'm very safe. All right, any discussion? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, so, sidewalks. We have... So on the sidewalk and roadway upgrades. Yeah. So we currently have, let's see, eight million allocated for that. Right. Can you get to Some of those funds, see there's a, uh, so there's some projects that we haven't gotten to yet. You know, we're still working on Victory Springs Elementary School, Chestnut Log Middle, mm -hmm. New Manchester. Then the next on the list was Chapel Hill sidewalk. If funds, if funds are available, technically when we first discussed having, so of course we can put them anywhere on Chapel Hill. The sidewalks were to be included in that intersection upgrade project, which is the Chapel Hill project, so right. three or four intersections. Uh -huh. So anyway, what, what I'm getting at is there could be funds remaining in that account. Mm -hmm. Or that category. Yep. Either way, we can still put sidewalks in the motion that that, that we talked about. Um, we can do that either way. Yeah. But there could still be some sidewalk funds in the sidewalk and roadway upgrade category. Well, I guess to your point, you can add to the list and move up based on what those are already covered over there. But this is a different pocket of money, yes, so you get to accelerate or expedite based on this new coverage. So. Just um, any other discussion on that? And Maxim Road is already listed under that sidewalk, sidewalk and roadway of grades. How much is that? We put, put 500000 in there. Right. So, right. That's, that's a cost test. Yes, yeah, that's long stress. Stress. Yeah, that's long stress. And how much is the sidewalk sum costing us for the, the three? We don't know yet, but we have... It's, it's, it's two about 2.4. 2.4. 2. Right. Stay with me. Okay. How much did the lights cost me to go down Riverside? 180,000. I got 128 lights, roughly, for 180,000. And you telling me that I can't light a roundabout on 166 or somewhere on Dorset Shoals or somewhere um, at the corner? Uh, a light on each of the yep. intersections. Can you tell me I ain't got enough money? No, you can't. Right, you can, you sure. can for those. Sure. And actually, if you have, if you have a, if you can prove to them that it's a safety issue mm -hmm. at an intersection, sometimes they'll install them for free. So it just depends if so there's a pole there, you know, whatever. All right. So I, I think safe I mean, sidewalks. Obviously, our development code is going to take care of things going forward. I think our goal was to look at sidewalks um, strategically. We're like with children, or there's two, we would have had too many accidents here, right? So, it, because it's costly. Look at the sidewalks, that's costly, right? So, Madam Chair, I think that that's why I was using discretionary 
loosely for that million dollars, but um, I think with, with your caveat, you know, lights and sidewalks, but that rather, I mean, it sounds like lights would be the more appropriate use for safety measure. I would, I think you can get there. Okay. You can get there. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. You good? Any more discussion? Yeah. All right. All in favor of the motion? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Jessica, you get all that? It's good. Okay. All right. Mark, you good? Mm -hmm. That was a lot in there. I want to make sure we get that. Too, so okay. We're good. All right, we go. Keep us going. Keep us going. All right. Next item uh, on the agenda is a sidewalk request at Lithia Springs High School. Right. Which, which would be potentially something that could be considered. Uh, we do have in the sidewalk and roadway upgrades a uh, splossed uh, category. Yep. A balance of uh, three hundred thousand. Yeah. Can this be added? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it could be allocated for it, and we'll pursue developing a, a scope oh, yeah, and, yeah. and pricing it out. Because at this point, I don't know that we're going to be able to do that for uh, for three hundred thousand. Right. So here's my question to you: How would you scope it out? Would you go get one of these engines? Remember how we had Mark? We had a ten engineer that was on standby. And this is for those type of moments like this, right? But they were supposed to, you know, we had the most standby agreements, right? They're supposed to go in, mechanical, civil, whatever they were, electrical, and be able to assess and scope things for us so we could actually at least allocate some money, recognize you still have to go into the formal design and all of that. Mm -hmm. How will you figure this out? Well, well, it really depends, but go ahead. Yeah, the, those, yeah, staff those or board uh, or you? We, we, we would have to do that in-house initially uh, yeah. based on other similar projects or prior experience or what have you because the contracts for on-call uh, have expired to, to my knowledge they, they're no longer active and so we would we would either have to get a consultant in to do the scope by advertising yeah. or we would do an in-house assessment as to what the scope is and what we think the estimate all right the reason i ask well again we don't just not do that here, but uh, meaning in this this meeting, which is it, it was nothing wrong with the premise of having these ten different engineering consultants on standby. And they were all there for a various a variety of you know based on their specialty, whether it was mechanical or electrical. So all of these you know, okay. No, I mean, okay, I got it. It made sense. And so these guys would do have one or three firms for each category. They were on standby for moments just like this. And they had their hourly rate. You don't have to come to us mm -hmm. one more time. The inconsistency is that. But we used those contracts, and you didn't have to come to us. You already, we, we blessed the 10 blanket based on the rates. And based on you guys signing authority, you execute. And you use and they did not have to come to the Board of Commissioners every time he used them. Because they fell within the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. guys and we already had a contract. Yeah. Right. Of course, because we already had an agreement. You keep extending mm -hmm. it. So you get you get my point. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm messaging a, a couple of things here. But that being said, um, to your point, can we just add this then to the official list? Meaning, um, okay. And that's all we can do right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, try to get a scope. You can do in-house, and you've got the capacity to be able to go do that. Just so, so that we can, um, uh, as citizens, give input. They just want to not see things blank. That we just acknowledge it, right? But I, I, I say, and I'm sure I'm not. It needs to move faster. Right. Meaning that one. We just want to add it to the list right now. Yeah. You good? Yes, I'm good. I just. I have one question yeah. uh, related to the sidewalks. Have we, you know, I've sent you some information by Sherman about, uh, about the sidewalk studies that have been done throughout the United States, just some benchmarking information. Have we looked at all our routes? I know you just mentioned, um, uh, Director Valentine, that safe routes to school funding has been dissolved. Um, did we have some type sort of list that if it had not been dissolved, that we would plan to roll out to? Is this, a, what is this, GDOT or ARC, who is this? That would have been a GDOT uh, program. I, I have to 
go back and, and see if I can dig up anything related to whether there was an active program here. I, I was speaking generically to the program as it existed okay. at GDOT, not necessarily yeah. okay. that we had a program. Now we did program. have a program. We did. Yes, but we didn't know that. And the only sidewalks I'm aware of that we put in were uh, God, what's, that school? what's that school over there off of 70, uh, South Sweetwater? Where the library is. So we ran sidewalk down that road all the way to the to the school. Mm -hmm. Is that Turner Middle School? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we ran sidewalks from South Sweetwater, I believe, all the way down. We did that probably seven or eight years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was the, um, are there any other schools or that probably just conducted the study to no. make sure we covered all? That's the only sidewalks that I'm aware of we've installed in the past seven or eight years. We tried to get the schools to do them. They won't do any sidewalks on their front um, on the right way. They'll run the sidewalks up their driveways to, to the right way, then they stop. When they build the schools, when they first built. But to that point, I mean, think about development services. We make everybody else do fronties. Are they so special that they don't have to they have their own? They won't pay for them. And some of it has to do with what they've been told is they can't install infrastructure on county right away. It's in front of their permits. It's like you yeah. like any other property owner. You. Yes, you, you're, you're, you're sovereign once your campus goes live, but we, we get that, but that is your campus. Interesting. I, I think I, that's just I've a, heard, I, I think that's Same thing with turn lanes, traffic signals, mm -hmm. all the above. I get traffic signals. I'll buy traffic signals. I don't, I don't buy sidewalks on their, their property right from there. It's like being in front of my house. That's, yeah, that's especially all. if you got a subdivision next door. All right. That's all I'm saying. All right, I won't belabor that. So, Madam Chair, to your point, um, you know, again, going back and trying to refuel history, I don't know, we've got 33 schools. That means in either direction, you may have sidewalk opportunities, right? Just at, at a maximum, right? Recognize some are already there. You got 33. Uh, and how many parks? You got 19 parks. So, how do they tie into those existing schools, right? 19 parks. 33 schools, give or take, the, there's probably 35 of them right in everybody else, but you guys get to put 20 and 35 for sake of conversation. And uh, are there safe passages to parks or safe passages uh, to, to immediate community centers? I don't um, And what would that cost? And is there a design for that? Um, is that something that you'd be interested in? Now, that's, that's history. This is my point is that, well, going forward, like developers and school systems should take care of their area. Now going back and recreating the history, I think that to a certain extent that's, we, we could tackle that, we'd have to take a little over time, but that's just like right now, um, it's history. Um, yeah, it's in the code now for developers. Going forward. That's automatic. Right. Yes. right. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think we go? Weigh in on this. I'm sure it has a, a point. Like, it, um, to get, I'm sure how, how interested are you in this study? To just you just want to know the answer. You just want to. I mean, again, I gave like, you got 35 schools, you got 19 parks. You can take 20. What do you want? What would you like to see? Just to but see. A, a before you answer that question, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. let, let me offer this. Uh, once you identify a deficiency uh, at the county level, then you have a certain level of exposure, obligation to remedy it. So um, it, it's like a lot of other things. I could go out and, and drive the county and identify a lot of needs. However, based on our ability to address them, uh, that's not something I would do. Uh, so you might, uh, my recommendation to you would be uh, that you target particular areas of concern, either because you're aware of it or because constituents have approached you. Like this spring high. Uh, exactly. Um, rather than embark on identifying 
all deficiencies in the county because mm -hmm. they'll be a long while before you can address them and, and in the meantime you have you get this study and it's saying you know. Mm -hmm. I, I just think the study would just give us a roadmap in the future. Just look at it. You can't do it all now, but just give us an idea without having to just keep piecemealing. It would just be a guide. And nothing specific about it. The public would know that we couldn't do anything. And certainly, history is, is, at this point is definitely driving our ability to deliver on some of these things because it wasn't done historically. But it would live, at least give us a guide. We said, okay, there's one, there's one. And when you, we get to it, and I mean this much, but at least it's there. It's been identified. So that's what I'm saying. It's just a study. But I'm not sure if it, it may cost you, you know, cost wise, I don't know. I'm not sure what that would cost just to look at it. Some places have done sidewalk studies just to kind of find out mm -hmm. your key areas, those ones that are really related to safety, would be something that I would like to see if we just have a study. I'm not saying you have to do that. Again, the study itself would not be overly expensive. My concern it my comes in from the liability standpoint because once you identify it, uh, you, you've acknowledged that there is a deficiency at this specific location and anything that happens between the time that you identify it and when you actually do something about it uh, becomes a matter of continual exposure. So there's liability. So I'm walking down the street I step off a sidewalk up there into a non, you know, I go sidewalk, non sidewalk, non sidewalk. I step on this non sidewalk, and if we don't have a list, that means I'm just walking at my own risk. But the minute that I make this part of a master plan, the things that I think I should do, that, that guy on the other side that's going to sue the county because this is part of your plan, you tell me that I'm exposed to liability that, that, that they could sue me. What are you saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, well, essentially, what I'm suggesting is that that if there is a limited amount of funding to be able to address these elements, that you target specific areas of concern, um, because again, if you if you identify all the areas, then you have a much greater exposure. You, you could always, like a lot of other things, you, you could say, well, this is now going to be our, our guide longer term. That doesn't erase or get you out of that exposure, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Is there a risk that exposure we're willing to accept? Um, in other words, it's a trade-off saying, well, I'd at least like to know the knowledge, at least like to know the brain, at least like to know the cost. Okay, citizens. And just like with anything, the cost of doing business that if something happens to us, okay, okay, call up, can you call up, Matt, I mean, really, I mean, right, so I, I think, hmm, just talking about sidewalks, with safety, we'd like to think about this a little bit more, we don't have to act on this and this one, I think the point is, Maybe if you guys as administration go have an offline conversation if you want to bring it back around uh, for why I'm studying. I mean, Mark, you? Yeah, no, I understand what Miguel is saying. I mean, I'm a two-edged sword. We need, you know, Chairman wants to look at a list. She wants to see a plan for the future. But, you know, it could, it comes with its. It's, it's an assumed risk. So how about yeah. we do this? As a committee, you guys administratively, you probably could take care of this again one more time inside the powers of the executive office. Like, mm -hmm. y'all need twenty thousand dollars to go do a study just to frame this. Like, okay, okay, right. So uh, it's professional services, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm again continue to make my point about consistency. So I'm sure I, I say no action duly noted on that sidebar. Um, at, let's add let the Springs High School at least to the list right now because that's something that was submitted by a citizen mark. So mm -hmm. let's make that formally there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you guys, you know, Mark, and Miguel talked to Madam Chair about what she would like to see and now come back around. Okay. But I'm game. Thank you. We go off to this Okay, Miguel, keep this going. Yes, Almost finished. Keep this question. Okay. 
Next item on the agenda is the 2019 resurfacing bid process. Uh, we uh, uh, had uh, a strategy going in this year yeah. to link the Elmig and the SPOS resurfacing for uh, getting better unit pricing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, uh, so that we are uh, moving uh, forward with that. We're very close to being able to have a document to go out on the street. Uh, one of the things that has become a, a point of concern now, unfortunately, uh, because of the incident uh, with the fire now, is that um, our ability to do in-house resurfacing is going to be curtailed for a while. And uh, so while we had the LMIG and the SPLOS list uh, and we're ready to bid that, we were going to do the 2018 remainder uh, paving with in-house forces. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the paver is one of the things that burnt down uh, or was severely damaged uh, in the fire. And so um, one of the things for consideration would be to consider adding those rooms to the overall bid. I don't know if from a fiscal standpoint we are ready to do that uh, or we can um, just treat it as an item of information today and then uh, as we develop better detail on where we are exactly what the condition of the equipment is when we think we'll be able to get that equipment operational again, uh, then I would bring that back and we can have another discussion. So we could uh, proceed as we were with that contract and uh, have a discussion as we get better definition on the other. The way Matt talked today, it'll be, a, it'll be a week or so before they can get to the equipment, evaluate everything, see right. where we're at. So where we're at. I haven't been fully referring to what happened. <coughs> There's a fire at the old vehicle maintenance building this morning about 3 o'clock in the morning. So an ambulance drove up to get fuel, saw a smoke, called the fire department. So there's significant damage to the building. I mean, it got so hot that it melted some of the beams in the roof. It was hot. Right. Um, but it also damaged some of our equipment. No. Nobody was hurt, nobody was there. No. Um, but yeah, it damaged some of our equipment right now. We don't, <coughs> you know, we all know what the cost, what the damage is. You know the cost? No. We do have insurance on the building, 1.7 million, plus another 400,000 for contents. Okay. But right now we don't know it. We don't have a total list. The paver? Paver was 360,000. Yeah. All of the brand new equipment that we moved to the to the inside of the building to protect it from the weather was exposed to the fire and spent damage. But those each piece of equipment should have insurance tied to it as well, shouldn't it? I would think. I would I would think well I would think through uh, the through insurance. Not just the building, but the piece of but equipment the piece should be insured. Mm -hmm. Can we find out? Yeah, we're working on it. Again, for full report, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's too big of a hit to hit, hit the news this morning. I just didn't give the details, so I appreciate that. Um, uh, but, but, but to the point, um, again, it's about cap capacity and cap and everything else that goes along with trying to do operations. Um, what I'm hearing you say, and now, Chair, this, i got to say this. We're going to continue on what we already, as a Board of Commissioners, approved for 2019 SPAS LMA move forward. Right. It's already in play. What I'm hearing you say, and this is what we really need to be sensitive to, which is, wait a minute, we're behind already for things that we're going to do in-house. Or are you saying we're behind on the LMA proportion of contract? But what, what, which one distinguishes? It's, a, it's a, the contract itself is separate. Yep. So we had a 2019 yep. SPLOS component yep. of resurfacing, yep. a 2019 LMIG component. Yep. Those two are combined on the contract that we just talked about. Got it. This other component was 2018 18. leftover or remaining roads. We were going to do that in-house 
concurrent with the conference. There you go out there. And the reason those are left over is because of that huge list in 17 that caused us to run late on 2018. They could have finished 2018. Oh, yeah. would have been done with they were still finishing 2017. So we're gonna pick up. So why didn't the guy that I paid to do that that didn't get done? Why didn't we make a finish it? It was it was our people. It was our our folks. It was in house. Okay. Remember the big list in 17 that yeah, that we uh, again. How many votes are we? You get Mark. How many votes? It's probably about uh, 50, 60 votes. All right, so, okay, so how much money? Okay, wait a minute. But seeing that you're going to handle it in house, there really was no money under the material, right? So, what Correct. Uh, well, we had we had gotten uh, the, the allocation from GDOT. Yep. Their okay. portion was $1.2 million and some change. Okay. Can we so, add this to the list, man? And just, you know, I've always been a proponent, man. Just outsource everything to these guys. We just had no potholes and cul-de-sacs, right? Sidewalks, right? Can, can we, can we just? Add, I mean, is it too late, or are they already down the page of design the RFQ? I mean, talk to we them. we have the RFQ ninety-eight percent done, right. so we would have to pause at these roads. We would have to do an assessment on the scope of services for those roads versus what we would have done going out there. We would, have, we would have to then repackage the bid to include all these other roads. Now, let me offer this. If we could have done it in-house for 1.2, yeah. it's going to be 2.4 or higher for a contractor to do it. His thing, we, we're going to get hit or we're getting behind. Neither here nor there while we're behind. Just that we thought you had a handle on this, right? We have no excess capacity. Um, I, I get this is a, an act of nature, an act of God, whatever it's called. Uh, and so we had this fire. So I, I get that that's thrown the current model off. Um, how do we make up that, to your point, that the, the double the cost, um, the 1.2 million? I, I was like. What about leasing the paper? Well, and, and that, that is something that we, an assessment we would make. Once after the initial assessment of the condition. So if, if once the, um, the manufacturer and, and the dealer that sold it to us uh, makes an assessment of the condition, says, okay, we, it's, it's uh, got these components, got to be replaced, it's going to be 30, 45 days before we can have it fixed, yeah. and it's going to cost you X. At that point, we would uh, then have to make a decision we want to go down that path and wait 45 days to begin our paving, or do we want to go ahead and rent one yes. and and go ahead and, and do the work? Um, now, we're we don't have to make that decision now because we can't pay. Can't right pay now right now. Now. Well, the roads, yeah. Right. But so at some so point, we have a little time. We'll yes, we have a little time to to conduct the assessment. But at some point, we're going to be in position to say, now nah, it's going to look like another six weeks before we can get going. Let's go ahead and rent one. Yeah. We start this. Yeah. So they are they available to they're, they're not they're not readily available. Mm -hmm. They're not. Uh, we tried it. Uh, in fact the last when we were purchasing one, mm -hmm. uh, the, they had difficulty in delivering on time. We just held on to ours that we were supposed to turn over to them, turn it back in. Um, until they provided the new. That was the only way. It probably added about three months to the timeline. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not easy to come by. Uh, but we would explore that to, to be able to regain that capacity. But it's not just the paving machine. Yeah. It's the growth. It's mm -hmm. the room. Mm -hmm. It's the skid steer. Everything was in there. Every new piece of equipment that we've bought in the last couple of years in there and it was all effective. Right, so, all right, I, I need a formal break on it. The, the, like, why are we even in that building? I thought we were trying to get out of that building, but I guess it was being used for storage. Um, that just, uh, it was being used for storage of equipment, plus some of Miguel's guys have got to yeah. get out of the weather. I mean, right the, outside. the operation, it, it's, it's still yeah. operational. It's That's fine. where we are. It's fine for what we're using it for. It's still, 
like the teacher tell me what's wrong with it, they're exposed to like, why, why, what, what are you saying? I, I mean, I'm hearing you. Let, let's let this go, let, because it, again, it, there is liability here. There's some insurance. There's some things that are going on uh, until we get a formal briefing. So really, um, the question is, um, do we take an action to to add this? I guess just to your point. I don't know if we can answer that question yet. I say stay on task. Um, one, this, belief, um, this opens the door to my other point, though, when I heard you say resurfacing was currently packaged. Is Lee Road resurfacing currently in here? Yes. Okay. It is, it is um, uh, in, in the package as we've discussed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in addition to in, in there, we're going to um, prioritize the sequence yes. that they're going to be doing the roads. Uh, there are a couple of roads. Um, there's Lee Road and there's Chestnut Walk Loop Road as well that will suffer Lee Road. They get that, yeah. Both of those would have to be done at the same time so yeah. that uh, obviously they're in that area. So those will be listed as before you do all these other routes, Correct. you do these. Mm -hmm. Number one. All right. Mm -hmm. Spring. Spring. Mm -hmm. Off the gate. All right. So is there any action you need to take here, County Administrator? Um, I mean, it's no, like duly noted. I don't think. But yeah. not as it relates to that. We've got to get some more information. Yeah, I, as, a, as, a, as you know, part Any notices to the um, residents in that area? You know, when we, if you decide, because it's going to tie the traffic a little bit. I don't care. We, I know they're excited, so it doesn't matter. But would you be putting out signs to say this is what's coming yes, soon? Yes, yes. Next month, or will right. we be ready to go? Mm -hmm. Or be ready to not confirm? So while we're on this topic, do we need to bring up, I know in the past week or two we've talked about Interstate West Parkway and yes. Douglas Boulevard. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Especially needing to be resurfaced. And They're Cherokee. Not on, and Cherokee's on the list. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Cherokee's already on the list. Lee Road's on the list. So Miguel and I talked. It's possible we could add these roads if, if, yeah. the, if the committee and the board of commissioners so fit. We can always pull it out of 2020 uh, resurfacing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's three million allocated every year, right. so we could pull whatever the cost for those. We could pull it out of 2020. Mm -hmm. But well, um, okay. All right. So the tip, one, I think, go back to and, and again, how much would it cost to resurface at, um, from Interstate West? And this is where we go back to. When we make decisions for economic development, we have to we have to do our part, right? When the board of commissioners allocates money, it should be spent to fulfill those, uh, whether it's in uh, concessions, whether it's um, uh, part of um, overlays, whether it's part of master plans. And I, I get the administration, you guys have the capacity to figure out how you spread that out, but you got to use it. And, but you can't say, well, developers, y'all exploit all your resources, and then we come behind that later. It's like, okay, come on, guys, don't, 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 let's, let's not do this. So I, I think from an administration, um, um, as a priority map chair, and I'm glad we had this call, and thank you, Mark, for bringing this back up. Interstate 20 is something, it's economic development. The developer did like his part. Interstate, Interstate. Yeah. West. Interstate West. Yeah. Yes coming down from the cob line down to the stop mm -hmm. sign, basically, uh, where the hotels have gone in, uh, which mm -hmm. I, I think we submitted that um, proof of, of that. Like, how do we, we, we should add that part of this list. So do you pull that money to your point for 2020? Mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying now. Okay, do you pull it from 2020? Or do you, um, if that's too late, in other words, like, well, that's next year. They're expecting that to happen this year. Why didn't we add that to the list? We didn't get it part of the list. Do you take it well, off? If we pull it from 2020 funding, we'll still do it this year. The money's there. It's a, that was kind of full mark. Just on paper. It's and and essentially, we, we have looked at it, that one and other words as well, but we had to pare down the list so that we could split it amongst the four districts and yes. mm -hmm. stay within budget. So I mean, I, but, 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 this wasn't about spots money coming down. This was a commitment that we made as a board of commissioner, as the board of commissioners, to do this right. To do Interstate West? Uh -huh. 
but we it never made it to the list simply because we were waiting on those projects to get finished. And it didn't make it to this year's list, like Miguel said, in order to divide it up among four districts, Lee Road took up That's took up the entire money for that district. But it, it supposed to, they did take it all or did it just take it was only supposed they to take took like it all. They took it all. They took it all. It, so it's only half million dollars? Six hundred and fifty thousand. They take all my money. Mm -hmm. So how did Riverside, which is seven and a half miles, take up only what seventy seven percent of my did my, my money, whereas this is only two point five miles. That year we had more money in in the LB. <laughs> I get it. But it got us, you know, it, it used up the CTL. I, I, I get it. So but you get what we, we all mm -hmm. right, so I, I think we're trying to balance operationally commitments that we make, projects that we're trying to get in queue, because the, while you also have, well, I'm a corporate citizen. I mean, I get the list, but we cut this deal that I said I would do this, we would do that. You didn't tell me that, oh, it had to be conditioned on this being downstream. And that's, okay. like, okay, we said, okay, if you do your ingress or egress, if you do this little part right here, then we'll do this. They're like, oh, okay. But you, 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 so you made them jump through hoops to get their CO, do it now, and we'll get back to you later. Let's, let's figure out a way to get them done this year. So if you're saying that it's 2020, kind of this year, I'll go with that. Let's not leave them out. So we can get a cost estimate. We we'll probably already have one on the Interstate West. Do you? We can get the chairman wanting to start. Uh, Douglas we'll Boulevard at Bright Star. So I'm mm -hmm. assuming we could just see how far we could go, what how far it needed. Um, so sure. not the entire Douglas we Boulevard. Have, we we have not that. done a uh, an assessment of Douglas yeah, Boulevard. We would have to. And so we would have to do that. And uh, what kind of allocation are we targeting? Because that is a pretty substantial road, uh, extra yes. lanes. Five lanes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's what we consume, you know. Now that's a I, I get that, uh, and I, I, but I, I think um, it'd be very expensive. Right. That would take up all of the allocation for that district, and it wouldn't get all the way through from one end to the other. Yeah, and I, think yeah. there, I understand I've been there, but I don't think you could take that out this one if you've already had it. If you already yeah, got it, have to twenty twenty. Yeah, that's actually the twenty twenty. Let's make a note of that. What else we got on our list? I've got another meeting here coming shortly, and I don't want to belabor you guys. Okay. Uh, let's see. We can come back to this. We'll just come back when I'm trying okay. to We'll get some calls. Yeah. Right. We've got a discussion on um, operational realignment DOT pay structure. Yep. I have a, a handout on that. Essentially, one of the things that, uh, that we have been experiencing is uh, we are not able to attract um, employees yep. uh, because of our pay structure. And uh, we did a, a quick uh, comparison with, with one neighboring county that shall remain uh, yep. nameless for the, for the time being. Yep. But essentially, uh, what we have found is that, that our pay structure uh, is uh, at least 10% lower than uh, an adjoining county, and it's not even one of the larger counties. It's right. one of the smaller counties. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the, the minimum starting pay, and the, uh, the salary range uh, overall uh, that they advertise as a starting salary is actually uh, as much as 50% higher than ours. So when we advertise, we we advertise the, the first uh, perhaps three or four steps in the pay grade. Uh, our, com our competitors are advertising the entire uh, pay range, so mm -hmm. they're able to attract uh, more qualified applicants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over the last uh, over the last year, we've had a uh, fifty percent of our field crew is either brand new or in a new capacity through a promotion. So uh, they are not as, as uh, 
first in a particular um, position, the operation that they're in now, uh, because of that. And uh, we've also had some promotions uh, that were facilitated. Uh, otherwise, we would have lost those people to, to our competitor uh, or competitors. Uh, we have over 50% of, of our field crews that are making less than $15 an hour. And that is getting to be the wage rate that is offered by the retail and service industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so unless we are able to do uh, something to close that gap, we're going to continue to experience that uh, inability to attract qualified staff or to retain them. Uh, we have had, unfortunately, folks that we've advertised, they've applied, we've gone through the interview process, uh, clear them for a background check and everything, and offer them the job, and they don't show up on day one. Because, as we later find out, they found another job in a company mm -hmm. county uh, adjacent to us, not just in the area, but right next door to us. Yeah. And so we are at a disadvantage. And so my, my recommendation uh, would be uh, to consider doing something to the salaries of the lower paid uh, staff uh, to get them closer to the $15 an hour uh, minimum starting pay so that we can... But whatever you did for any of them, you have to do for all of your lower paid staff. That's correct. If one was making $14.99, you were going to give the lowest guy a three dollar raise. You'd have to give him a three dollar. Raise. You would have to make an adjustment to, to yeah. them as well. Uh, that's correct. Have you had any conversations with HR regarding this, um, or just just really internally within your operations? I mean, uh, and I'm sure I know that there was a study. There were some things that were done. What intelligence currently exists to help support this? The only reason I bring this up, not to belabor that part, which is again. We put 51% of our money in spots. We put all of our attention, we, uh, our, of our spots money in transportation. We, 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 we've consistently shown that we're willing to put money into transportation. But we don't have the people to deliver the promises that we're making, saying, look at us, we're putting, look at us, look at us, look at us. We're putting money into transportation. Look, road, road, road. We're going to experience our tax dollars, but yet I, I don't see the, your, your your infrastructure, I mean, your infrastructure, your personnel infrastructure, it, it, it can't handle the expectation that's like today and even coming. It's like, how do you keep up with this? And we'll keep pushing this. There's continue to be a demand. Okay, we're supposed to be turning in potholes. So your pothole is about to pop. Mm -hmm. How often are you going to get out there? Or do we just send in emails and y'all not responding? I mean, do you get what I'm saying? When I, when I'm Madam Chair told me about that. I'm like, oh, wow, okay, ooh. Right, so now you get your list of potholes just went from maybe 10 reported a day to maybe 400 reported a day. How are you going to get out there? Or is it just, we just want to have our database refresh. I mean, what, how do you do this? This is just more of a conversation, but I'm, Madam Chair, I mean, you put more money in, have y'all, what's the dollar? Mark, what, I mean, how many people? What's the exact dollar? I don't know the exact dollar amount. We'd have, have to discuss that. But then also, what the chairman and I. Well, it's a broad number, not perfect. We'll discuss the other day. It's like from 2008 cruised, we're down two cruises. <coughs> we are. Each I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, actually, we're two and a half. Two and a half. How many people in the crew? How many people in the crew? There used to be six, so now there's four. Five and one, or. And what happened was we lost some people. I'm assuming I wasn't involved from downstairs then, but I'm assuming they lost when some people left or yep. quit or yep. whatever. They were told they were, during the recession they were told not to turn anybody back. So they were frozen. Now those positions are the frozen positions do not exist. They would have to get more approval because you gotta get more approval anyway to have those back. So we're down two and a half crews in addition to the pay scale on some of these. So, speaking of going back to the, well, the, the economy is somewhat growing relatively. Uh, our infrastructure never came back commensurately. We still are maintaining recession level 
Mm -hmm. Staff. Staff mm -hmm. to pay everything. We, mm -hmm. we froze, but the, it's, it's okay. People came back, but we. Um, yep. yep. I'm only stating the obvious. I, I just want to mm -hmm. make sure I heard it. Madam Chair, this is just us. So what would y'all like to do here? This is more of an FYI. I know this was the, the, the broach to conversation. It's more of a policy conversation that should be discussed publicly. Like, okay, yeah, how we can do come up with some this? numbers, mm -hmm. can we? Sure. Yeah, and Frederick, we, I don't think we've talked about it. I, at least I haven't. I've talked I to Frederick have. about it, but not in detail. I have, but not in, in detail yeah. in terms of developing it. So he's aware. Can you have that conversation with him specifically and come up with some amounts? Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but again, Madam Chair, I mean, to this point, we have, we've unfro we never, we unfroze them, but they don't really exist. That means you got to retreat them and all over. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, and so, and then we, again, we're having this expectation. Again, Madam Chair, I'm not speaking for you, but it seems like there's this expectation that we got to perform better. We got to just at least do what we say. Okay. And it's like a lot of things, that we, if we don't outsource it, that means we won't insource it. And I'm looking at the in-source, so I'm, my, my concern is like, okay, are these things that we should be outsourcing mm -hmm. or these are things that you really have to have internal? Because I can outsource something fast. Internal requires maintenance. I'm, what am I, what well, do you think? The, the equation is essentially we can do it faster, cheaper, in-house. Mm -hmm. You, you can outsource it and get it quick, yeah. but you're going to pay that, you know, at least premium. 50 in premium. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to stretch the dollar, uh, you want to do it in half. So the capability, if we, can, if we build up and maintain the, the capability, we can do it better than, uh, quicker and cheaper than the Okay. All right. Y'all ready? Over time. Am I over my time? What time did you want her to come back? We said 3.30 when they got here. Okay. Well, she's what time there, is it? There. It's cool. Uh, it's uh, 10 minutes to cool. Can we have Sherry bring them back? Yeah, they're supposed to come in when they got here. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's what my instructions So we, we will explore this. We'll, we'll I'm just, glad that you brought this because uh, that was a concern of mine. These salaries need to be um, commensurate with number one what they do. And also, we want to compete with other counties. We have to compete, I believe, about I've been hammering that message mm -hmm. uh, since I've been in the office. Please, that we have to keep keeping. That's why you benchmark and look, and you said this is not even a big county. Right. Ooh, yeah. I can imagine we we behind. So, mm -hmm. and then you said we two and a half crews down. Sure. In order to get the workload that the citizens are expecting, or should I say the results mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. outcomes, we gotta just bring us the numbers, mm -hmm. and then the board of commissioners will have to adjust the court. Okay. You ready? We'll do it. It's time. Okay. Don't you agree, Vice Chairman? Yes. I, I should I say, Chairman of this committee, of, we need to move. We're, we're good, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, so, committee, you, know, you got your marching orders on this. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back formally mm -hmm. um, to mm -hmm. talk to HR about um, um, compensation for your organization, recognizing. And this is, while I heard the, the, the sentiment that um, I can do it cheaper, faster, better, faster, it, it, it's about scale, though, right? Mm -hmm. It's over. In your current, in our current capacity, you'll get to it. You'll be cheaper, faster, so that that scope of work is going to take you a long time. Mm -hmm. Versus, it's going to cost me a premium, but I get it done today. It's a, it, it, a trade-off, right? Sure. And so that's why you, you, you I, I think you have to segment the things that are mission critical. You outsource it, like the big roads that we talked about earlier. Things that we can strategically handle on our own. Um, you know. The, the, the non-major arterials or the cul-de-sacs. I, I think you, you see what I'm saying. I'm trying mm -hmm. to segment them, say, well, okay, I get you can make that part of it, but I'm the premium is the premium. The cost that it takes to do Riverside early road is what it costs, right? That's premium. So you save me money over time over the maybe the the, the one offs, but uh, you see what I'm saying. So sure. it, it's right. not the major savings, but you guys are going to come back formally for us. Mm -hmm. Anything else in the agenda? Because I, I there's yeah. several other items, uh, discussion items, uh, particularly. Uh, but if you wanted to, uh, well, just name them real quick for the record. Just okay, so um, one of them we definitely need a recommendation on, and that's number number nine. Number nine. Oh, number nine. Okay. I think we added number nine. Okay. okay. What, what is so we have it? So it's Connors Road uh, early warning yes. signal. Correct. 
Uh, we'll just take this last item and we're going to shift um, and close this out. Can we pick the rest of them back later at our next meeting? Yes, we can. Mark? Yes, sir. We Madam can. Chair, is there anything you want to discuss that, that we can't wait till later in the birth? All right, this will be our last item, Miguel. Okay, um, the Connors Road, uh, it, it, there is a, a project that was designed. Uh, we advertise for bids. Uh, we got a low bid, uh, and we're ready to award the contract. And so we, we need to, uh, we, need, we would need a recommendation to proceed to the board with a, with a contract. Uh, as you might recall, we also have a memorandum of, of understanding with uh, the city of Eureka that they will reimburse the county for the cost of that project. But however, we would have to uh, front the money right. and get reimbursed. What's the I mean, okay, you're a little bit? I mean, yeah. 70. Yeah, I think it was around 70,000, 76,000. Yeah, something like that. And where will you source this from? Well, what we'll do, we'll, we'll word the agenda item, so we pay it, we send Bill Ricker invoice, mm -hmm, Bill Ricker pays it back, we put it back in Miguel's account. So the okay, so you're going to fund, but you're going to fund this out of your budget? Yeah, he'll fund it, we'll find out. We'll figure it out where the money we'll is. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll but it'll be budget neutral, because when we get the check from Bill Ricker, we'll put it right back in where it came from. You need to be specific, guys, where is the money coming from? It's budget neutral. <laughs> Where's the money come from? You asked board officials to, to approve something tonight. I'm just not. Oh, it's not, it's not on the agenda tonight. It's not on the agenda tonight. That's we We want a recommendation. Mm -hmm. So we can. Because we don't have, we don't have another transportation committee meeting before the next board of the right. commissioners. We so just want a recommendation. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. And this project to, to proceed to the board for the contract. I know. I'll make a recommendation to approve. Um, the amount of money as stated with the provision that you will be specific about the source before it comes to the board. Yes. Okay. Second. Any discussion? That's, that's in my neighborhood. I third it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get it. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor of the motion and the second say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Jessica, you okay on that one? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, um, thank you. Again, we ran a little bit long. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close out this meeting, but I, I want to just acknowledge we have some guests here. Uh, this, this, um, try to take, come on up here and sit up here because this is being filmed live. Oh, really? Yes. We have uh, our city Let's council. Uh, yes. Please. City councilwoman, mm -hmm. Dr. LaShawn Bird Danley, welcome, chair of the Transportation Committee. Uh, Thank you. For the city of Douglasville, and you have a guest. Would you introduce her? Absolutely. I'm here today representing um, Douglas County School System. I'm an employee a site coordinator, and this is Jill Smith. I'll let her introduce herself. I'm the homeless and foster services coordinator for the Douglas County School System. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, you want to share something with us, and we're going to, guys, just part of it, just want to go ahead. Sure. Um, thank you so very much for allowing us to come. Um, like you all were so deep and passionate in what you're doing and we're so excited about your the transportation. We just had a, some simple questions and I'll let um, Jill ask questions as well as like um, confirming your routes and also um, Ms. Smith actually is the coordinator for our homeless and foster children so we wanted to see, um, she wanted to speak with you in regards to the voucher system and we just kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, okay, Gary, <laughs> you're my guy. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the okay. So routes. Let's just. I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Just hit it real quick. Routes and where we are. Sure. Well, we're going to start our fixed route system with, with four routes. Uh, routes ten and twenty are more specifically to serve the city of, of Douglas. Uh, route thirty is it's more of an employment route to serve uh, Riverside Parkway and Thornton Road, and then Route 40 is a connector route from Douglasville into Richmond Springs, and it also provides a connection with Cobb on into the HE it, it Homes. Uh, it's it's uh, public transportation. It's open to uh, anyone. Now, we will have some uh, uh, stipulations Relating to children riding, uh, there'll be a certain age that they'll have to be 
before they can ride the, the bus on their, their own. Uh, so we've, we've got some things to work out through that, but, but certainly um, for, for middle school age students, high school age students, they will be able to take advantage um, of the bus service. And we, with our, our, especially our Douglasville route, routes, um, we worked hard to hit high density areas where there's apartment complexes, um, townhomes, things like, like that. Um, depending on where your, your foster children live, uh, we could certainly try to serve those. And, and, you know, we could work with you to see where they live and, and to see what we could do. What we, about um, on the routes? Are any of the routes going near any of maybe possibly high schools, like with my homeless students who are um, more transient with um, how they move? Mm -hmm. It can take um, a few days sometimes to get a bus, school bus route set up for these students. And if they don't have transportation, they'll miss school during that time. Mm -hmm. um, if the students could catch a bus, some of the older students, to get near to another bus stop um, that could be an alternate um, while we're trying to set up bus transportation through the school. Mm -hmm. um, are, y are any of the routes going near? Route 10 goes right by Douglas County High School. Okay. Are y'all going to be doing a voucher program um, where you could buy like several passes at once? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. We'll, we'll have multi-trip passes available. Is there going to be any type of discount for students? It's only a dollar for students. And if that goes for um, high school level, I mean like anybody, school level Anybody who has a valid student ID. Okay. Yeah. A valid student ID? Yes, ma'am. Do all of our students carry student ID? I don't think so. I don't think that's really something we have to take back. Mm -hmm. Or if we could, you know, if there was a way that we could meet and we knew that there were students who, Yeah. You know, well, the, we'll, we'll have considerable leniency on that if, if somebody looks S like they're a middle school. They, and we're not, we're not going to put up a fight and say you can't ride because I don't the think they're 50 years old and saying they're a student. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. No, that's a little different, yeah. So do you have routes that are, because I haven't seen the routes um, yet, but do you have, all of the routes. Do you have routes that are pretty much going with the, within the school system area? Like even Alexander is? No, ma'am. No. So it's just Douglas County mainly, right now? Right now, mainly Douglas County High School. Well, we do have a route that could serve Stewart Middle School. What about Lithia Springs and yeah. Man? No? No. Uh, we do have a, I, I think <coughs> these things as we talk, we, we do have a route that could serve in that Wynn Elementary School. I know this is this is just trial and error and if your routes are going to depend on your ridership how often will you actually do a survey once you uh, once it's kicked out well, out we'll we'll get when we first uh, launch we'll give ourselves about three months probably okay. before we do a, a serious evaluation mm -hmm. and then of course after that it'll be a constant evaluation wow. where we can make a, a change at any time and then your hours and your days uh, Monday through Saturday, Monday uh, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Wow, that is awesome. So do we try to keep right at the store? Mm -hmm. right <laughs> you said 6 a.m. to 8 on Monday, Monday through Friday, Friday and, and 7 to 8 on Saturday. That is great. And um, again, those are those are subject to t change too. If we see that we need to run earlier, we will. If we see, you need to see we need to run later, we will. Are any of the bus routes going to be going without looking at them? I wouldn't know going past the, um, the women and children shelter on Sandy Lane. I know a lot of those women do not have car mm -hmm. transportation. Um, I'm not exactly familiar where Sandy Lane is. So over there behind the Douglas County bus barn, behind no, that. No, we don't have anything mm -hmm. there. 
That is where that the is a women and children's need. homeless shelter is, That's and right. those women have really struggled with finding transportation, transportation to get to the grocery store, medical care, mm -hmm. even to get to um, registration out on oh, okay. Highway 5. That would be another, as you'll add, um, families have a difficult mm -hmm. time. They don't have cars getting out to Highway 5 to register right. their children for school at the central location. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, and this is exactly the kind of information we need moving forward as we evaluate okay. our routes. So I'm assuming that's information that we can get to you now? Sure. We know Absolutely. that there are, there are pockets of individuals yes, that do not have transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Add it to less yep. potential this future expansion. Time. Is it going to be um, full size buses or are they more of a van? They're, they're what we call cutaways. They carry 15 passengers. And that's, I don't know that we'll ever get much bigger than that. And now there will there'll be set bus stops or is it door service? How is it? Um, we, we will have set stops. Uh, however, we will pick an individual up anywhere along the route provided there is a safe spot that the bus can pull over and not impact safety or traffic. Now we are we are also going to have a, a, a component it's called deviated service and, and that will be where an individual can call us 24 hours in advance mm -hmm. and make a reservation okay. and the bus will actually veer off of this route to pick that individual. I think that's the, uh, what Gerald County is doing is yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. And now ours, again, ours will basically only, that service will be available basically only along our routes. So oh, it won't okay. be out in, right. in Fair Play or South Dover, places right. like that. And Gary, you talked about, the, and, and again, this is a pilot program that will run from start to what, a three-year pilot. And, and, and through that process of feedback every so often, the adjustments. Um, yes, sir. We, we have funding for three years, the first three years of the program, and uh, we're counting on the program being very successful to where it's something the commissioners will absolutely want to continue after that that three years. And, and we realize that this is a new program, a new service for us. Uh, we know that there's going to be revisions as we, as we move along. We, there may be areas on our routes now that we find that there's just no ridership mm -hmm. at all. We may find that there's areas like y'all are talking about, the, the, the women's shelter that we've absolutely got to, to serve. So it, it's, it's gonna be some, some hit and miss, give and take mm -hmm. uh, as we go along. But we're gonna try our best to serve as many people as we can. Do you also have a route that will be able to accommodate uh, individuals with special needs? Um, it's a wheelchair or? Well, again, a requirement of uh, fixed route service is complimentary paratransit service. All of our cutaways are equipped with a wheelchair. Okay. Yep. And so uh, individuals with a disability or a special need, again, who are, who are within three quarters of a mile of anywhere on the route, we can serve them. Okay. To that point, when we talk about wheelchair, um, uh, yes, they can get on. So how do I get from my house, from my place, to the bus stop? Mm -hmm. And uh, will we have uh, little called shelters there? I mean, how will that there really work, right? So I gotta move. I gotta get there, and then get on. The van can accommodate me, but do we have sidewalks and things and spaces that will allow people? To well, with with the, the ADA paratransit service, we either have curb to curb or door to door. Okay. Curb to curb means that we'll we'll come to your house, but you're able to get to your house to the to the bus. Okay. And door to door is we're required to go help that individual get from their house to the bus. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Councilwoman, Ms. I don't have any other questions. Do you want to have questions? When are you looking at starting? Sometime this spring. 
we're, we're still working through uh, some of our, several of our, our very final issues before we can get started. Good to list. Um, two things well, to that getting started. Have, um, have you received anything from our marketing, um, our firm? Have we shared our marketing plan that were, you know, the collaborative um, intent to communicate with the public that I think that they want to know? Yeah. I don't think we've shared with them, but certainly we would we would be glad Council to make Councilwoman, would you like to receive an email from us that would Please give you our like full plan mm -hmm. since you're the chairman of the We We can give share. you that. We'd be glad to have meet with y'all, with anybody. Absolutely. Also, I was going to thank you most definitely so I can share this with um, share it with both of us, please. But also, will you have another opportunity? So um, before you start for individuals to actually take a ride on your route, I did see it on channel two, I saw it yesterday, <laughs> the announcement. Will you have another chance for individuals to ride to take a ride on your route? Well, yes, ma'am. Okay. We'll work on that, sure. Okay. All right, so maybe Jill and I can ride, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you want your own independent. You want, okay, you want an early. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you wanted to be on the inaugural ride. Right. No, she and wants her own. I guess. Well, and, just and, just and for we'll, others. We'll, I know you've done yeah, that. Yeah, we'll be glad to do that. If, you, if you've got a group of five or ten okay. that we'd like to, to see we where we're going, we'll yeah. be more than happy. Sure. Oh, that's yeah. a great idea. Absolutely. Just just smell. I mean, that's the ministry you guys call it. Sure. Anything else in this world? We, we are in a formal transportation committee meeting. We just added you, uh, you know, amended you. you to the agenda. So, Thank is there anything so formally? We can keep talking after, but is there anything else you would like to add? No, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. You're both good. Thank you so much. Committee members, is there anything else we need to talk about today? Madam Chair? Park line, please. Okay. That just meeting stand adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.